And then it looked like he had a baby dick on his foot. Would you rather have a baby dick or no toe? Would you rather have a toe that looked like a baby dick? Oh, that's, that's, or I was no like, toe? Hey, man. <laughs> Well, I gotta have the work. You already got a baby dick. I'm saying on your foot. Doctors are huge douchebags. I, you know, I want to. I want to make America healthy again, and so does President Trump. So uh, I'm. I, those, those are objectives. My. Um, you know, the Wall Street Journal may be worried about shareholder value for pharmaceutical companies, and uh, I think you know I talk specifically. President Trump about that issue, and he said that he wanted to leave as his legacy healthy children, and he was unconcerned about the other implications. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Gatsby Podcast. I am your host, Joe Guy. Dan drinks everything. And eats everything, and that's true. I couldn't come up with anything else. What else is there? I mean, sums it up, man. So what's up? What's, what's, what's new with you? Everything's new. With yeah, me. like what? Yeah. Expand on that. Stop. <laughs> um, Monday twenty-eight. You're on. Do you want to talk about that yet, or do we want to keep it a secret? Ah, uh, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. 20, on the 20, I'm on day 28. 20 is impressive. Updates coming. But I'm on day zero. <laughs> yeah, most people are. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I don't think most, but probably. Anyways, uh, let's keep it moving. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? How are you? What's What's new with you? Uh, I heard you you got a new uh, new. Uh, gig oh i did i got a new job yeah so no more nights i'm off the night the this you know the cemetery shift um yeah now your schedule is all fucked up well it'll yeah it won't be as um consistent as the night schedule is but at least i'll be on days and i'll be able to have a normal life again yeah, yeah. i'll That's be good. able to uh That's regulate good. my eating a little bit better and um i'm trying to give up one of the worst uh, companies in the world. Starbucks. Oh, I thought you were going to go for the place you work at. But <laughs> well, I, Starbucks is I, I need too. money, so, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Starbucks is bad, yeah, too. So, like, at this point, if, I, if my math is correct, I should own at least two Starbucks stores by now. How much I've given them. I could have opened two, probably. Um, so, I, I, I bought an espresso maker. Used to be there. Nice. Yeah. Dope. Use um, it. Yeah, well, that's the plan, you know. I have a plan. We bought an espresso, espresso machine. Yeah. Espresso. Espresso, espresso. Yeah, machine. Yeah. Uh, Did you use it a lot? You got a lot of, you got a lot of use out of it? Uh, we used it once, and it was when David visited, and he used it. We didn't use it. We never used it personally. Really? Yeah. You, guys, you, uh, you both drink coffee, yeah. right? I mean, I know you did. Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Was yeah. it an was it yeah. an espresso or an actual like it's an espresso like machine? You grind and you put the thing in. It's just... Yours looks nicer. The one that I well, saw. That's kind of you. Yeah, yeah. No, you bought it. So. So when you come out, are you gonna nicer. drink coffee? If I make you an espresso. Fuck no, I don't drink. You won't coffee. drink an espresso. Just straight black no. espresso. No. It's a bean. Beans are a fruit. The yeah, more you, when you the heat more you them up, too. they produce acrylamide. Oh. Acrylamide causes cancer. Why would I put that on my body? Plus, coffee is very acidic. Fuck, that hurt. Well, when you speak truth, sometimes it hurts. No, I like ripped the skin from my finger just now. Are you okay? Do you need to? We'll be right back. Do you need to take a break? No, no, oh. no, no. It's a good okay. thing. We're. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um. Your finger got bitch ass side. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Apparently it does. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Bitch ass side. <laughs> Remember that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, bitch ass side is having motherfucker. 
So anyways, in the meantime, until I... F- Isn't that a great... Is, I came up with that, too. I didn't steal that from anybody. Like, I came up with bitch ass I just... Until I uh, figure out my express, espresso machine. Here I am. Bro, I used to go... Ha- so every morning, I'd go to Dunkin' Donuts, and I'd get uh, a regular hot coffee, mm-hmm. and then I'd get an iced mocha frappe fucking... Dessert. You'd get you get a coffee and dessert. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Like fucking 12 or 13 yeah. bucks total. Yeah. Cuz I I I'd probably get like a breakfast sandwich too actually, which would have made it even yeah, more yeah. money, but yeah, bro. I save so much money not eating bad. Yeah. Especially these past 28 and days. You, I saved a lot of money. Dude, I told you I, I'm I'm <laughs> giving up fat, well, trying to give up fast food. Uh I bought a lot of healthy shit we cooked uh at home um a lot last week. And uh, I noticed, I, I had the tendency of like I bought a, too many bananas. I bought too many avocados, so I'm like, before I can even eat them all, they're going bad. So I I realized I'm going to save money too. I just need to buy less and go more frequent, right? So that's something yeah. nobody ever told me. You know, just buy a couple bananas. Nobody told me you could. Bro. Nobody told me you could pick up the bunch of the ones you like and say, eh, I only want this many. I never thought of that. Yeah. Nobody told me that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he told me. That. I just thought, oh, here's a bunch. Bro. I have to buy them all because they're in a bunch. Nope, you don't have. Hey, you don't go... have to do that. You don't. Oh, oh, here's another trick. You want half a bag of grapes? Guess what you can do? Take the half a bag out, put it in a different bag. Now that other bag's out of bag and a half. That's not your problem. You take the half a bag you want and go pay for those. Because guess what? You get what you want. I've never done that. But you can do that. You heard it here first. You can do it. I heard it here first. Yeah, you can. Dude, I was getting... I'd go buy fruit almost every other day or every other day because mm. I don't like when my shit goes bad. Yeah. So I'm usually I'm usually buying shit almost every almost day. Almost every day. My fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well... Unless it's water. I'll, I'll stock up on watermelon because, yeah. you know... I won't buy produce from certain places, so uh, I'll, I'll have to go like... Every- uh, definitely don't buy it from your work. I I wouldn't say that, but I mean, there's a certain place I definitely wouldn't buy produce from. You know what I mean? So, um, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm I'm gonna have yeah. to go like every other day to to a place and. But I do work at a. Where do you? Wh- nah, nah, where do you go? Uh, I mean, they're all the same, aren't they? Though at the end of the day. No. Okay. I get produce Sprouts. at Wegmans or Trader Joe's or Sprouts, Sprouts before Trader I get Joe's. it at Walmart or Target or um, Fries yeah. or any of those. Yeah, never, never go to like a um, a superstore to get your right. produce. Right, you want to go to like an actual. You want you want to go to a farm if you could find or a, a farm, farmers market. Far, yeah. yeah. Um, Joe, why do you, if you can go to a? Why do you always talk about food at the beginning of our episodes, bro? It's like it's starting to be. It's, I, I it's never do. Be, it's always you that brings it it's up. Starting to become a trend. I've noticed. Yeah, since episode one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so today um, I'm basically gonna rip apart the medical industry and the mm. um, corrupt bullshit fucking doctors that uh are incompetent pieces of fucking garbage and everybody needs to fire them uh here's a doctor talking about how he was paid off by big pharma how much money did you make working for big pharma my initial packet was like a three hundred thousand dollar base salary with about a sixty thousand dollar bonus built into it and stock options as well my whole package together was about seven hundred thousand dollars this was a director level position the next step up would have been the senior director position and, and i would have been pushing like 750 the next step after that easily making a million dollars i actually make much less now than i used to working in pharma why did you quit big pharma i had to make a lot of compromises on who i was to be there you're kind of dishonest with yourself and what you believe and you tell yourself i'm just going to be a team player and go on with everything there were always these little things that bothered me and how we were communicating the safety information to the public it was more costly to me to not be a true version of myself despite the pay cut and the risk i needed to get out of there and do something that was more in line with who i was as a person what Uh, i just had some (laughs) thoughts i was trying to remember some statistics i had heard did you know that um, I forget. The, I don't want to butcher the statistics, but a large group of people who work for the FDA um, after they leave their job at the FDA and they go to work for 
these big pharma companies uh, after there's a cooling off. There's a legal cooling off period where they have to wait, and then they go join these these uh, big pharma companies and make yeah. rake in the dough. So they're working for the agency who creates regulations and things for these big pharma companies. Regulations. Well, you know what I mean. Like they they loosely regulate. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then then they go make money at those companies, which is hilarious. Yeah. To me, so. It's fucking crazy, dude. Big Pharma runs the entire fucking... Uh, the, they run everything. But FDA needs an overhaul, man. The FDA needs to get just shut down. Well, I feel like there needs to be some regular regulatory agency. Bro, there need, they don't regulate shit. Oh, let, me, let me rephrase. There needs to be some oversight over the companies that feed America. Right. That's why I say it needs yeah. an overhaul. Like they they need to be honest with Americans about what they're what they're pumping into us, and um, it's it's gonna take a it's you know it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna take a lot, but somebody needs to go in there and just. They, you shouldn't be able to sell people things that are just killing them. Every single pill on the market. Right. Uh, most food, most processed foods in the grocery store. Right. That's m- we went. We had the episode where I showed you they put fucking cleaning paint thinner in fucking cereal. No one's going to the fucking grocery store and looking at that box, seeing that fucking word, and then figuring out what the fucking word is. They don't give a fuck. They want to fucking hop their kids up on crack, and then yell at their fucking kids when they're not acting right. When you just pump them full of the shit that's making them not act right. right. Yeah. Go look in the fucking mirror and yell at your fucking self, not your kid who you're the reason why they're acting like a fucking asshole. You say, look, stupid. You did this. That's what you do, right? Look, stupid. It's you. Yeah. It was me? You go, yeah, it was you. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little. It was them. It's almost football season. I'm getting a little excited. Let's play the next slam. <laughs> Look stupid! Look stupid! You gave him that sugar. You made him act like that. They did. Teach him better. Yo, not even teach him better. Feed them right. <laughs> Your kid's an asshole because he's hopped up on crack. And you're saying my kid's not on a crack. Sugar's worse and more addictive than cocaine. So you hooked your kid on crack. What? There's no way you could prove me wrong on no, that. No, I, I because I'm, the entire country is addicted to sugar. I'm, I was, I was, sugar. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was going through it. I was trying to figure an angle. I was trying, I was trying to play that was that, you know, that was advocate. Trying to figure out an angle there. Uh, it's not my fault. You let your kids listen to bad music. How how did that phrase go? I mean, f- how did that? That's bad. Too. How did that phrase? How did that <laughs> phrase go? Why you why what? you let your kids listen to bad music? Remember? Do you remember that? Oh, oh is it? I know what you're talking was about. Was that on NF? Um, it was on something. Yeah, it was NF. Pretty sure it was NF. No, I think it was Hobson. Maybe Hobson on an NF track. I don't know. Uh, anyways, you anyway. cut all that out. Stupid, stupid. Right. I'm not gonna. Okay. Here's this. Here's this lady. Hey everyone, it's Nicole Saratek with American Frontline Nurses, and I just want to give you another heads up that we are getting reports from uh, patients across the country that when they go into the hospital, they decline remdesivir, but um, the staff is saying it's not remdesivir; it's Veclery. Well, Veclery is the brand name for remdesivir. So just remember that each drug has two names, a brand name and a generic name. So the generic name is Remdesivir and the brand name is Veclery. Look at the four independent studies, including the large study by the WHO. It shows the opposite effect. Remdesivir increases the risk of death. Let me say that again. Remdesivir increases the risk of death by 3%. It increases your chances of renal failure by 20%. This is a toxic drug. 
But just to make the situation even more preposterous, the federal government will give hospitals a 20% bonus on the entire hospital bill if they prescribe remdesivir to Medicare patients. The federal government is incentivizing hospitals to prescribe a medication which is toxic. So, it should be noted that remdesivir costs about $3,000 a course. Dr. Corey spoke about ivermectin. Ivermectin reduces the risk of death by about 50%. It costs the WHO two cents. Two cents. So, as regards dexamethasone, this is the wrong drug in the wrong dose for the wrong duration of time. Yet every clinician in this country will absurdly use this homeopathic dose of dexamethasone. Why? Because the NIH tells them to do this. So what the NIH and other agencies have ignored are multiple FDA-approved drugs. These are FDA-approved drugs. These are not experimental drugs, which are cost-effective and safe and have unequivocally unequivocally been shown to reduce the death of patients. <coughs> Speech up. Uh, yeah, so when the whole uh, 2020 bullshit happened, mm -hmm. all these people were dying in hospitals, not because of the fucking actual uh, virus or radio wave sickness, it was because they were putting all the patients on remdesivir and then they were hooking them up to ventilators and they were dying because of that. Mm -hmm. And doctors were getting paid to put people on remdesivir. The doctors don't give a fuck about us. They care about money and they care about not losing their jobs if they don't do what they're fucking told. Which means every fucking, not every doctor, most fucking doctors that aren't holistic doctors don't give a fuck about you go fire your fucking doctor and find a holistic doctor or find a doctor that's on the frontline doctors list because all of them walked out of their fucking their jobs and are at, we're actually trying to fucking help people that are in 2020 that nurse that was just on a little bit ago she's a frontline nurse like Go to frontline doctors and you'll find actual people that want to help you. But the, the bullshit that, that you guys are all dealing with, you couldn't fucking pay me to go to the fucking doctor. <clears throat> it's fucked up, dude, because I know me and you both know someone that died in the fucking hospital during 2020. Yeah. And it wasn't. Bro, I just got fucking goosebumps just even fucking saying that it's fucked up, dude. So I feel like the, I mean, nurses and doctors, some, not all, obviously, I'm not going to categorize all, but a lot of them were putting a, uh, a challenging predicament during that time, right? They were, they were told they had to get the vaccine or else they were going to lose their jobs, right? And they had to follow protocols or else they were going to lose their jobs. So, you know, <clears throat> a lot of them had families, I'm assuming, and, and bills and people to take care of that relied on them. So what are you going to do? You know, what do you just go kill a bunch of fucking people? Well, I mean, that's what they were doing. And if they weren't doing it on purpose, right. they were doing it because they're incompetent. All doctors are just like college professors, teachers, they learn the same shit out of the same fucking Rockefeller textbook and then regurgitate what they fucking learned from a book. Doctors don't heal patients. They treat them with meds so then they can continuously come back and pay more and more and more and more. You lose a customer if you heal them. And you treat them, they keep coming back because they're not treating them they're just suppressing the illnesses in their body. So then when the illnesses start to flare back up, they can come back in, get their daily dose of drugs, and then be on their fucking way after they 
shove fucking thousands of dollars in your hand. If people are like, well, I have I have health insurance. Yet yeah, you're paying for the health insurance. And if you're not and you're on like some fucking Medicaid or some shit, uh, they're still getting paid by the company that's fucking, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, they're still getting money. It's a fucking racket. They're a bunch of drug dealers. I, I mean, I, I would agree to the point of Big Pharma being that um, I feel like doc, most doctors probably other. I mean, yes, there it is financially motivating to be a doctor. Obviously, you can make a lot of money, but I feel like a lot of those people wouldn't spend all those years studying and go into that amount of debt uh, if they didn't feel the call to help people. So as I think there's a large portion of them who are, you know, want to do good and and help people. Um unfortunately it was a, it I mean it, it was a challenging time for a lot of people and I mean none of us have ever lived through anything like that before, especially doctors and nurses. And I I you know, I, I guarantee if they could do it all over again, they would choose to do, th- you know, hindsight's 2020, man. Hindsight's 2020. So they wouldn't choose to dance in the fucking hallways while people are supposedly dying. I mean, <laughs> also, also bring it, bring it back to the uh, if they, you don't think that they would go their whole lives um, and get in so much debt if they didn't want to help people. That brings me back to the incompetent part, where instead of actually learning how to heal people, they read it out of a book on what pill to give these motherfuckers. Not motherfuckers, people. Oh, uh, they're incompetent. Most doctors are fucking incompetent. Well, you, you gotta, dude. You gotta Fire remember, them. these people are going to what? A lot of a lot of people believe that the education, higher education, is the, is the right way to go, and it's not a, a scam. A lot of people don't <laughs> believe that college is a scam, man. That's 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 an uphill battle you're fighting there. So, you know, in in their defense, and I'm not saying they're right, but in their defense. A lot of them think that they're doing the right thing, you know. I don't believe that. I think deep down they all fucking know. They just don't give a fuck. You think deep down they all? You're saying all? I didn't say all. You did. You said all, but it doesn't mean to me. Deep down, most don't give you a think fuck. Most doctors don't give a fuck about their patients. Yes, correct, one hundred percent. That's because I think most doctors aren't incompetent. I think most doctors are just money hungry assholes who think that their fucking their shit don't stink and they're on a fucking that, power that's trip. It's a bold statement, and you standing on business with it. I appreciate that about you. All right, so <laughs> medical bills. Okay. Let's... Do you think when you go into a a hospital um, and they give you a bill for like two thousand dollars, do you think you got to pay the whole two thousand um, dollars? You don't technically have to pay any of it. You can die with that bill. Well, no, I'm saying. All right, so here, you definitely don't have to pay shit, and don't, never pay a fucking doctor again in your life. Fuck I don't them. go to the doctors. Uh, here, I, I pay here, for insurance, but I don't use it. You're smart. I, I mean, I pay for the insurance, but I don't use it. Why? Because <laughs> you never know when you might need it. Like if my arm get, you know, like something happens. You could not pay me to go to those motherfuckers. I'll fucking shove a stick and fucking bandage it around it if I break my arm. All right, here's this chick hey, talking about medical insert bills. Insert the video of the guy with the fucking the nunchuck arm that's broken up here, and you just be swinging it. <laughs> now I'm the human nunchuck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so funny. <laughs> uh, here's this chick talking about medical okay. bills. Talk about that. Many people, and Maria included, seem to think that medical bills are what they are. When you get charged a medical bill, you have to pay it. Doesn't work like that. She's blowing my mind. Yeah. This is why I love my rich BFF. Medical bills are actually very negotiable. And in fact, unfortunately, 80% of medical bills have errors in them. Imagine getting a 20% in a class and having that be a passing grade. What I do when I get a medical bill, I immediately ring up whatever office, the hospital, whatever, and I say, can you please provide me an itemized bill? You would be shocked the number of random things that just kind of fall off. Oh, you accidentally charged me for two x-rays? I'm not paying for two, I only got one. And so just make sure you have an itemized bill so you know exactly what all it is. Here's the other big thing. Sometimes these hospitals know that if they don't work with you, they will not get paid at all. So what you can actually do is call them and say, hey, I'd love to pay this bill in full. Unfortunately, it's $5,000. I can pay $2,000 today, but I would need the rest of the bill to be waived. And many times, oh, magically, your bill's only $2,000 now. Guys, Heal Squad, what is this advice? 
So don't pay your fucking bills. Well, don't pay your bills anyway, but if you really want to pay your bills because you're scared of the big bad credit monster, um, just tell them you you can only pay 500 bucks, but the rest of the shit needs to go away. And maybe it'll work. I haven't tried it because there's no fucking way I'd ever go to these fucking places, but, um, you know, there's that. Actually, my credit was fucked up for a long time because of Kaiser Permanente, mm. so. Yeah. <clears throat> um... Yeah, I've heard I've heard them uh, double charging, triple charging. Uh, the itemized report is uh, a game changer. And um, I have this phrase, man. I wish I wish it was OK for me to suck at my job every day. Like she said, 80 percent of bills just become a doctor. 80 <laughs> percent. Oh, Joe, you, you standing on business today, boy. I gotta stop saying that. Cut that out. That's stupid. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but man, stop saying cut shit out. I'm not cutting cut anything it out, out, man. Cut that shit out. Cut it Dave, out. Dave Dave yeah, I like it. Yeah, bring it back, man. Cut it out. I love you. Too. <laughs> bring it back. <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> I was thinking about a, a scene from Clerks too, talking about bringing it back. That's a phrase. That's a phrase. Know, that's I'm bringing it back. <laughs> oh, porch monkey. It's okay. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm bringing it back. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyways, I wish I could suck at my job every day. <laughs> she said eighty percent of the bills are wrong. Uh, are are no eighty percent? I wish I could. Do my job up like twenty percent quality and eh, fuck the rest every day and just be it'd be okay. Yeah, I wish I could suck at my job every day and it'd be okay. Four out of five days, fuck it. I'm gonna suck four out of five days this week. Do something. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> All right, here's a doctor. Right. Hi, doctor. We're getting into the doctors who actually care about you. We'll tell you the truth. We wait for you to get sick, and you do. Then, once you are sick, we don't restore your health. The doctor gives us a toxic pill which makes us sicker and keeps us sick. We merely manage your symptoms. So we can manage your high blood pressure, we can manage your cholesterol, we can manage your pain, your arthritis pain, we can manage your diabetes. We don't cure you. The current health care system is a hoax. <clears throat> yeah, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. No, whoa! You just say everyone yeah, knows, knows that? that? Nobody fuck. No, no, no. Bullshit. Well, Not okay. everybody knows that. Nope. I. That's wrong. I'm fighting you on that one. Majority of people know that. Nope. 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 Wait, nope. You, Not even you're a saying that uh, there's a lot of people who think that the big pharma and hospitals are are actually trying to cure you. Yeah. No, nobody believes that. Do we live in the same world? I hope, I like to think so. We live in the same country. Yes. The West is the most retarded country. America is the most retarded country. Well, on the vaccines, plane. dude, we give out the most vaccines. It's it's uh, it's hurting these, you know, people. Bro. Oh, you're talking about the other kind of retarded. Never go for retard. <laughs> All right, here's another guy. Medical doctors that lie to Hashimoto's patients. Hey, everybody, I'm Dr. Michael Johnson. In relation to magic? I've been in functional medicine since before it was called functional Got medicine. It. I started practicing in 1983. I wrote this book. You can beat thyroid disorders naturally. I wrote this book. What do you do when the medications don't work? So I've had many patients over the years, and one just recently that I have to comment on. So she sees her physician. Her sister has Hashimoto's. For those of you who don't know, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune thyroid. Your immune system is attacking your thyroid. And what happened was her sister has Hashimoto's. She goes to her MD. My sister has Hashimoto's. Do I have Hashimoto's? He runs the tests, and he says, no, you don't have Hashimoto's. She comes to our clinic because she feels like crap, and she knows we can help her. She signs up for care. We run all the tests, so we run a complete thyroid panel, eight different thyroid tests, including TPO and TGB antibodies. 
I also got her medical doctor's records. He never ran the TPO and TGB antibodies. He flat out lied to the patient. He ran free T4 and he ran TSH, which is normally what they do. They don't bother running the TPO and TGB antibodies because they're just going to give the patient medication anyway. They don't know what to do with an autoimmune thyroid. That's why I wrote the book. And he flat out lied to the patient. She was very upset because she did have Hashimoto's and she should not be eating gluten, dairy, or soy. And she no needs should. to be on an autoimmune paleo diet and she needs support. We need to clear out her underlying toxins and infections. We need to support her mitochondria. We need to decrease her inflammation. That's how you get autoimmune patients better. Not just Hashimoto's, but I have Hashimoto's, which flipped over to Graves, um, RA, Sjogren's syndrome, lupus. I mean, name the condition. Psoriatic arthritis, Crohn's, UC. I mean, just name it. It's the same. But MDs will lie. Now, are you saying all MDs lie to patients? No, but I'm saying a lot of them do. A lot of them flat out lie. I've seen this happen so many times where the medical doctor will insist the patient does not have an autoimmune thyroid. They didn't even bother to run the TPO and TGB antibodies. So, you know, if they don't have a drug, they can't fix you. If it's not drugs or surgery, nothing we can do. Who can help me? We don't know. What about supplements? Ah, no, that won't do you any good. And I agree, you shouldn't be taking armfuls of supplements. Out in motherfuckers. So there are doctors who care, but they're usually holistic. Natural. People call people call uh, natural uh, herbs and shit alternative medicine. That's just the real medicine. It's not alternative. It's original. Pills <laughs> are the pills are the fucking alternative right. medicine. <clears throat> yeah, it's the OG OG medicine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not alternative. It's, it's OG. The it's medicine. OG, son. It's not even OG. It's, no, it's the OG. medicine. Pills or potions and fucking. There. Casting spells. Po I mean, they're doing that all over. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Want to keep yeah. going? I like right. it. Young adult cancers are up 79%, and this is and the elderly. Young adult cancers are up 79%, and this is the first year in American history we're estimated to have over 2 million cases of cancer. 25% of American women are on an antidepressant medication. 40% of 18-year-olds have a mental health diagnosis. We have the highest infant and maternal mortality rate in the entire developed world, despite spending 2x on infant and maternal care than any other country. So you have a higher risk of dying as a woman giving birth in America than any other developed country in the world. Autism rates in kids are one in 36 nationally. This was one in 1500 in the year 2000, and the screening has not changed in California, where and I live. And the I just want to linger on that. And the screening has not changed. So in 20 years. the definition hasn't changed. No, one in the 32 from one in 1500 in California, one in 36 right now, it was one in 1500 in California. It's one in 22, one of the worst states in the country for autism. So this is just a what smattering. What the hell we, and, and all of these conditions, I mean, and I could go on and on, autoimmune diseases, infertility is at peak rates. I mean, I don't know how this is not front page news. Infertility is going up 1% per year. Sperm counts are going down 1% per year since the 1970s. Sperm counts are Con down. Continuing, to drop. continuing oh, to drop. Food. At an increasing rate. Air. Our bodies Active are crying water. out. 26% of women have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, the thing that people need to understand is that all of these conditions are caused or driven by the exact same thing, which is metabolic dysfunction. This core foundational issue of how our bodies on the cellular level function, which is driven by our toxic food system and our toxic environment. These subtle insidious forces that are creating slow progressive illness starting now in fetal life that allow patients to be profitable and on the pharma treadmill for their entire lives. They make us sick, but they don't kill us. And then we are drugged for life. You look at what's happening in children, a, a child born in a hospital in the United States today, within an hours of coming mm. from source into this, you know, into this body, the first thing that happens to them is pharmaceutical intervention without really asking, you know, I mean, there's barely con informed consent about this. That child's eyes are smeared with erythromycin ointment and they're given a hepatitis B vaccine in their first day of life. 
And what are these two things for? I mean, this is, I mentioned this because it's, it's just emblematic of how we're put on the pharma treadmill from the moment we are born in this country for reasons that are very strange. The erythromycin ointment is to prevent chlamydial infections of the eye, which we test women for chlamydia. So why would every baby in the United States need this ointment if the mom doesn't have it? And the hep B vaccine is for hepatitis B, which is a sexually transmitted disease and IV drug user disease, of course, which babies are not going to be exposed to. Um, and yet every single baby in America is getting the intervention. So from the literally the day we are why, born, we're why? On this so, I mean, why not test the pregnant mother for those? They do. Okay, so they give it to the women who even if they have tested negative. Which would be the, the overwhelming babies. majority. It, absolutely. So I don't understand why would you treat a child on his first day of life for illnesses you know for a fact he doesn't have and isn't going to get. So this is what I saw working for pharma. So let's let's get out of the passion of this debate and just talk about the economic incentives. Let's take the happy. Okay. There's actually no dynamic in American capitalism like the vaccine schedule because the second you get something on that schedule, the government's paying hundreds of billions of dollars for a product that's then mandated for every single American living. So just from, I'm just speaking again, not, let's not even get into the efficacy of vaccines. No, we're talking, talking math. From an economic, math. I'm talking math. Working with the pharma industry, it's a huge economic imperative to get more and more vaccines on the schedule. You couldn't watch the Olympics this past couple of weeks ago without seeing just ad after ad for actually new vaccines. This is big business, right? Hundreds of billions of dollars. And again, once you get it approved, what happens? It's paid for for everyone. And you have the most trusted institutions in the world calling anyone a war criminal for even asking a question. <clears throat> Makes me glad I don't have it's, kids, man, because it would put me in a very uh, tough predicament having to make that choice. No. Just tell them you're not fucking loading my kid up with jack shit, motherfucker. Or have your kid naturally home birth get a little fucking play pool and have the baby in a, like a water birth or whatever. You don't have to go to the fucking hospital. Fuck those doctors. They're just going to shove you fucking tons of fucking meds inside of your child's body uh. that they don't fucking need. Babies get like something like 72 vaccines in the first like month of their life. 72. And if people think that the Schmovid vaccine is the only bad one, all of them are fucking bad. All of them. There's not one good vaccine. Not one. I don't know enough about vaccines to uh, make that statement, but I don't think you're right about that. I'm sure there's some good ones. There's got to be a couple good. You're there's got to be a couple good ones. No. All right. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. No. Here's Dr. Seven. I'm glad I don't have kids. Ah, young man. I said, yes, sir. I heard that you've been experimenting with herbs. I said, yes. Well, I'm blind. I'm blind for 10, 11 years. Could you help me? I said, I'll try. If you make me see, I'll give you a million dollars. I gave the man the substance. When am I going to see? I said, by Friday. Now, why did I select Friday until this day? I don't know. <laughs> but I was so sure of myself. But how could a boy that didn't go to school be so sure of himself? The man went home with the medicine. On the Wednesday, good morning, young man. I raised my right hand. You say you raised your right hand. I winked my left eye. You say you winked your left eye. I said, the man is seeing. At that point of my journey, I couldn't explain that. I know there's a bunch of herbs that cleanse the man's body, but they were all alkali plants. So anybody that's like, how did you get this guy to see? Where's the proof? Dr. Sebi went to court. The FDA sued him. The government sued him. They told him he needs to bring in. We already did an episode on this. If you didn't see the episode, just recapping. Uh... In an ad, he put in that he cured cancer, AIDS, herpes, blindness, lupus, all these kinds of diseases, and they sued him. They said he needs to bring in one patient for every illness he claimed to have cured. He had to bring in nine patients. He brought in 77 patients, looked at their original diagnosis from their doctor, and then they re-examined them with the court's doctors, and they were all all the illnesses were completely gone. He used herbs, fruits, and fasting. He won the case. 
he went to jail for an unrelated incident overnight and then the next day he died of a heart attack when they let him out of jail they killed off the dude so him saying that he just cured this blind guy he proved it that he cured the blind guy there's court documents that prove it so uh there are real doctors out and he's not even a certified doctor he didn't go to school for medicine is he a chef he said he had herbs and spices. He working with key? No, I said herbs. I said herbs, fruits, and fasting, not herbs and spices. I heard what I, heard what I wanted to hear. I know what you heard. You always hear something that. Was it a mistake? Somebody say steak. Bro, I gotta ask your mom that. What? As if you were a mistake. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I I, I was the planned one. I was <laughs> <laughs> the planned one. Lo you love you, Jess. Jess. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> she knows. I bet she does. Um, <laughs> so, um, I have someone very, very, very close to me who is diabetic. <clears throat> and he thinks he will die if he eats only fruit. And... Um, he thinks that he needs to pump some fucking insulin into his stomach every fucking day, multiple times a day, every time he eats. And uh, he doesn't think that he'll ever get off diabetes. Well, here's a guy that's fucking awesome. And uh, he brings receipts with him curing okay. diabetes. I like receipts. I'm a receipt check his ass. Hello, my dear ones. This is Dr. Morris. And I want to show you and introduce you to the world of tissue regeneration. A great example of tissue regeneration, as I've been talking about for the last how many years I've been on YouTube, 20 or 30, and been doing this for 50. I've been into regeneration when I was back as a fruititarian living in the woods. I knew by living just on fruit, watching the changes in my body, I knew what could cure. And I knew that the kidneys were a major component here, the adrenal glands. And so as I started uh, practicing as a naturopath and seeing people and learning more, my experience back in living on as a fruititarian in the woods came into play a lot. So this gentleman came to me, he's a diabetic, uh, type two. Uh, he, is, he had a callus on the side of his toe, just a callus. And when the ears, nose and toe guy or the uh, toe guy, whoever, cut this callus out, he ended up with nothing underneath it. So when you look at a callus, a callus is a bunch of dead cells and acids and, and metabolitic waste that are not pulled out of the body properly. So they, they're building up. And when they build, when these acids build up interstitially, and that could be anywhere in your body, you start breaking down cells. If, they, if a pathologist takes one, it could be a cancer cell, but it's just a cell breaking down because you're not removing the waste from that cell out of that region of the body because no one ever told you that the kidneys were the connecting link of the uh, waste out of the human body. So when you build up waste in the human body, the blowback on the tissue is, is what you see in these pictures on this toe. Now, th this uh, gentleman was a diabetic. What diet did I put this gentleman on? I put this gentleman on 100% fruit. He's a diabetic. I put him 100% on fruit and nothing else, and I gave him an herbal program. The herbal program was designed to open up the kidney filtration of the lymph, uh, turn on the adrenal glands, so it can turn on the kidneys, it can turn on electrically, everything else in the body, autonomically. So there's a lot of things we were doing in this case, but just fruit, just fruit and an herbal program. And as you see the progression of this toe, now over here you'll see it detoxifying the bone out of itself. The body gets rid of what it doesn't want. You have to be in the proper electrical and chemical stance to do it. And in detoxification, the chemical stance is going to be, or slurry is going to be alkaline, base chemistry, a hydrating chemistry, which is a chemistry full of electrons. And that's going to be your fruits, your berries, your melons, and your salads. And this man just did this all on fruit and the herbs. So you can see where the body's kicking out the bone and necrotic tissue. As you can see then, the body's rebuilding this tongue. Bro. And in the final you got a baby analysis, you have a foot. fine toe built back. Allopathically, it was removal of the toe and maybe a lot more than that. So this, and being a diabetic, they didn't even fix the diabetes. They don't know how. And so I fixed this gentleman's diabetes. He, has, he does not have blood sugar problems anymore. He's got a toe there. And as we see it progressing, it looks like it's going to get a toenail on it. And we have got a new toe rebuilt.
That's tissue regeneration. When you learn consciousness and you learn all this, you will learn how things work here in creation. You will learn how chemistry works. What drives chemistry? What drives your emotions? What drives thought? And how does that manifest in chemistry down here? And how do you take something like this in a decay of acidosis, in a decay of atrophy of tissue, and how do you make it new and rebuilt again? Remember, the body can decay and die, but it can also rebuild and, and live longer. You just don't have one. Medical doctors don't understand that. But we naturopaths understand life and how the body rebuilds itself. And once you learn how simple that is, and each and every one of you can learn it, you can regenerate your body all you want. Enjoy the world of tissue regeneration. Bro, he rebuilt that motherfucker's toe and removed his diabetes with fruits and herbs. That was nasty. I know someone close to me who lost who fucked he had a callus on his toe broke that shit open and had his toe fucking removed mm. and then broke the stitches on the fucking toe and then had to get his fucking foot removed leg removed fruits and fucking herbs don't go into a doctor and have him chop your fucking limbs off when you can cure that shit yourself sorry i'm very angry about this Need a minute? Do you want to take a minute? No, I'm we'll be good. right back. No? Okay. No. All right, Dr. Phil. What do you think about the toe? I almost threw up. <laughs> and then it looked... He proved it, though. Looked, He's got pictures. And then it looked like he had a baby dick on his foot. Would you rather have a baby dick or no toe? Would you rather have a toe that looked like a baby dick? Oh, that's, that's, or no like, toe? Hey, man. <laughs> Why gotta have the worst? You already got a baby dick, I'm saying, on your foot. Why gotta have the, the worst of both worlds? <laughs> you get no toe or a baby dick. You choose. What the fuck? Uh, I, <laughs> You're the one that said <laughs> No, you said it. Uh, I, would, I would prefer to have a toe that looked like a baby dick rather than having a baby dick. So you can actually balance. Yeah. I got this crazy balance, bro. You ever see me I'll cross you so fast? What? I got so much balance. I can do the balance beam. All right, here's one more from Dr. Morris. I say probably the first thing it takes is a change in your consciousness, a change mm -hmm. in the individual's awareness mm -hmm. to one where they respect themselves a little more and they want to get well. They really want to, to enter the realm of well-bill, wellness and health, whatever it is, and they're willing to let go of preconceived ideas and things they were taught that was crap, mm -hmm. not true, and that they're willing to take on a new journey of excitement and joy and happiness, because I'm telling you, when you start getting in there and you start eating the fruits and stuff, they just embrace you. They clean you, mm -hmm. but they embrace you. Mm -hmm. So the flavors and everything, you start, you know, very few foods make you smile when you eat them, but fruits, when they're, when they're tree ripe or vine ripe, mm -hmm. they, they, this, 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 this is a smile <laughs> you get when you eat the fruit. I don't know what it is, you yeah. know, and you see primates go, this is good stuff, man. <laughs> so it's just, it's just the, and that's where all the nutrition is, but it's also where all the magnetic energy is, therefore mm -hmm. the consciousness. So fruits are the highest consciousness of a food-based origin that you can get besides that and the berries hold the highest awareness. Mm -hmm. Of course, all the berries are granular. So anytime you eat a berry, you're helping all your endocrine glands, mm -hmm. adrenals, thyroids, pituitaries. I gotta eat more fruit, man. I know. That aren't in ice cream bars or alcoholic <laughs> beverages <laughs> or <laughs> separate on their own. <laughs> what about if they're baked into a pie? No, dude, because it's fucking covered in sugar. Processed sugar. Yeah. Not fructose. All right. Taking all the fun out of this. Go ahead. <laughs> you want to yeah, keep going? Yeah, I do. All right. Women have more testosterone than estrogen, although estrogen is clearly the more famous of the hormones in women. So low estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone in women have effects that are bad for women. When perimenopause hits, for years they've said hormone therapy is bad, estrogen's bad, yet we've known for 20 years that bioidentical hormone replacement in women lowers their risk of getting heart attacks and dying. So it turns out that's so weird. In men and women, if we keep their hormones at healthy young people levels, they stay younger, they don't die, they have much higher quality of life, and they don't get sick as often. Why would the pharmaceutical industry not want us to do that? I can't imagine. Can you think of a reason? They don't make money. They don't make money. Huh. All right, I got one more video. This is Gary Brecka. You probably heard of him. He's the breath Gary guy. Gary V, right? Yeah. 
College is a scam. B. Oh. College is a scam. Gary V. We have the power to heal. The human body is a magnificent machine. When we thought we would hand over 32 trillion cells to Big Pharma and trust them with their poisons to change the direction of our health is, is, goes lost on me, right? If... <laughs> human beings were meant to do what we do right now. I'm telling you right now, if you don't load a bone, it won't strengthen. If you don't tear a muscle, it won't grow. And if you don't challenge your immune system, it will weaken. <laughs> human beings were meant to do what we are doing right here, right now. So one of these five actionable genes, when these genes break, we get anxiety, we get ADD, we get ADHD, we get OCD. Have you, any of you ever do you, it suffered from depression? Or how many of you know somebody who has suffered from depression? Look at the hands in the room. 44% of this country is on an antidepressant. And it's not helping. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Eat fruit, meditate, and you'll be the happiest person. You, you'll never... Listen, D. I'm living and breathing proof of mm -hmm. this. You eat only fruit. Mm -hmm. You meditate or just be alone with yourself, with your thoughts. That can be dangerous. And it will be the, no, it will be the happiest you've ever been. I promise you. No, dude, I'm not even joking. I promise you. You'll be the happiest you've ever been. Every day you'll wake up happy. I'm telling you. I believe you. you. I agree. Well, I, right. I, I think you're right about this one. All right, good. Then why don't you do it? I'm a creature of habit. Everybody is until you break yeah, I know. the habit. Uh, I've, listen, man, I've given up a lot of vices over the years. The hardest one for me has been food, clearly. That was the hardest <clears> one for <throat> me, so, too, and I did it. We you think you're better than me? What do you no, think? I'm telling you, you think you're better than me. Me and you live, me and you live together, and we'd go on fast food fucking tours, and we'd eat like fucking trash for how long? Two straight fucking years, just garbage every day. I'd bring home like six fucking McDonald's diet cokes for us, and you would too. And bro, we <laughs> ate like shit. It was the fucking worst, and I overcame it. You can do it. You can do it. You're fucking strong, dude. Is self discipline is the best thing you could do for yourself. Self discipline saved my fucking self -discipline life. Self discipline changed my self care. Life. Yes. Yeah, I know. I, I'm aware. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll get there someday. Right. On that, I'm just letting you know that you can do it. Listen, man, I've quit. I've quit. Food. food I've quit. Food is like, dude. Food is worse than heroin. Yeah, I know. That's why it's the hardest. You need food to survive. Yeah. Well, you don't think that, but uh, I'm walking proof right now, bud. It's 28 days now, but by the time this episode airs, it's going to be like. I don't know, like 30 something for. Yeah, is it? OK, yeah. Yeah, because I'm done. Not this Friday. Next Friday. 35. Oh, ready. 35. <clears throat> Anyways. Anyway. Um. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. That being said, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll get there someday. Time's running out, though. I know. I know. I know Time's running out. That's for sure. I'm feeling it. Your time ain't running out. I'm feeling, out. It. I'm feeling Listen, older D. than I've ever felt in my whole life right now, bro. Boom. Here you go. You just Once call me you boom? actually, I said boom. 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 Same thing. Did you just call me um, boo again. I did not. Uh, I've never called you boo. <laughs> Bro, once you actually cross the hurdle of the food bullshit yeah. and you get on fruits and shit, you'll feel. Tw Dude, I like I said, I didn't feel this good when I was 20. That's how fucking great I feel. I feel young as fuck. That's what's up. So time ain't running out. You can change everything about your life. Listen, man, we're all we're all two decisions oh, away God. from uh, being homeless on a beach somewhere. So you're right. You can change anytime you want. Bro, homeless on a beach sounds amazing. amazing. I mean, it but does. I do like showers. That's the, you know, hot showers, Pr hot private showers with some. Or just swim in the ocean. Mm, no, no, that's not. 
it's not a hot private shower. Hot public showers too are kind of nice sometimes. <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay. <sighs> That's all I got yep, today, me bud. Me too. I've said enough here. Fire doctor, tell them they're a fucking piece of shit, incompetent, scumbag, money hungry fuckface. Also, f and that's all, all I right. got. Well, um, like, share, subscribe. Get this one out there. This one more than most, I think, uh, needs to be shared. So I love that you say that a lot. <laughs> you say that on a bunch of the episodes. every every time. This one, the, no, the. Because we talk about real shit. With, when you come up with bangers like this, bro, I want the people to hear it. You know what I mean? That's good. So, bud. like, yeah, 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 like, share, subscribe. Um, yeah. I'm so happy we're out of the fucking politic fucking loop. We did 10 straight fucking po politic episodes, bud. It's almost football season, y'all. It's almost football season. It's time. All right, bye. <laughs> All right. Well. Oh my god, we're wearing the same Buccaneers fucking Yeah, hoodie. dude, I got you there, remember? Yeah. What does that say? Oh, what is that? Hold Buccaneers. on, what does that say? Germany? Dude, yeah, it's that's Germany a dope hoodie. fucking hoodie. I wish I had one of those. I'm actually German. A and I love that color green, if you have not fucking noticed. I have German in me. <laughs> I bet you have had German in you, you nasty freak. Not in me, but I've... I gotta go. Hey, I gotta hey, go. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Godspeed. Love you, bro. Godspeed, brother. Love you. You've reached the offices of the Godspeed podcast. We are currently closed. Please leave your information and someone will return your call within 24 business days. Thank you. I have yet to see anything that can't be healed. Yet when people come to see me, usually they've tried many different doctors over many years and they still haven't gotten better because doctors are treating the result of the imbalance rather than the cause. It would be like if you had a leak in your kitchen and I told you I can help you stop your leak and all I did was mop up the floors. That should do it. Uh, call back next week if it's still leaking.